So welcome back to another episode, and today I'm going to talk about a couple of games that really rock, some brand new games that really rock, and I'm also going to talk about Sonic Frontiers right here. I'm going to save this to the end, I have a lot to say about it. Yes, absolutely. So to begin with, I'll ask you guys, what are some games that you've been playing or some upcoming games that you're excited about? Let me know down below. Now the first game I'm going to talk about is a re-release of an older game, a game that you guys know I absolutely adore. I gave this game a 10 out of 10 in some lists that I've done, and that is a re-release of Ease 8, The Lacrimosa of Donna on PS5. It's finally coming to PS5. What do I think about it? Well, you know what, to begin with, I started a brand new game. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna start brand new right from the ground and just to see what it has to offer. What does the PS5 game have to offer? If you go and check out on NIS's site, they show you that they've improved the shadows and the draw distance, and there's also Japanese-only DLC available in this. So, I played it, I played the original game, I, I love this game to death. How is it? I gotta say, it's, it's, it's quite up. I'd say 80%, 90%, it's very, very good. Uh, the graphics are really nice. They look great in 4K, uh, definitely upscaled quite a bit as well. Running around looks really good as usual. All the combat, everything is back. It's the same game. Frame rate is really nice. That's the one thing I want to say. Um, how is it let down a little bit? It's let down in a few areas, like to begin with, some uh, of the backgrounds, like when you're on the ship and you look up at the sky, you can just tell it's a low-res JPEG. They didn't really upscale that at all or redo it as we were hoping it would be done. So that's kind of like a little bit of a letdown, but overall the game looks really stunning and really plays really, really well. I will say this much, for anybody who hasn't played Ease 8 and you have a PS5, oh my god, go and get this game right away. It's an action RPG, you'll have an amazing time on it, uh, playing on this deserted island with Adol. Highly, highly recommended. As you know, I like the Ease series, wonderful stuff. Uh, the only other complaint I have to say about the game is in the opening cinematic, uh, which is all anime, something I absolutely adore, it's really weird, the frame rate, it's like they're trying to make it 60 frames a second at certain times, and sometimes the animation's like 24 frames a second, so it has this really weird smooth, then all of a sudden jitteriness to it that I, I didn't feel in the original opening. So that's something that they're trying to make it, like, I don't know, 60 frames a second, and sometimes it shouldn't be. It's really weird. You'll know what I mean when you watch it. I'll try to display it here. Uh, so you can actually understand what it looks like, but that's the only strange thing, but it's really great that the, the PS5 game is out. And here's the other thing. I ordered the special edition. I had to. I had to. I love this game. I've ordered everything to do with it. I have the, the soundtrack on vinyl here. I have the soundtrack on CD here. Upside down. Go figure. But I have the soundtrack here, and then I got the Switch version and the PS4 version, special editions, and now I'll get the PS5 special edition. I think that just shipped, I ordered that ages ago, months and months ago, so high recommendation for Ease 8, Lacrimas of Dawn on PS5, really good. A few things that are a little bit of a letdown, but overall the game is still stunning and enjoyable, and what an action fest it is. Now next up is a very beloved series of mine, and we've waited a long time for the third game, we waited a long time. I remember the Game Awards when Reggie first announced it, and that was years and years ago. And I honestly, at one point, I thought, they buried the game, they can't get it to run well on Switch or something, because it, it hadn't come out. And I was wondering all the reasons why it hadn't come out, and that is for Bayonetta 3. I've been playing it, yes, I'm playing God of War, that's my top game I'm playing but I wanted to come in and play some of the fun games like P you know, the PS5 version of Ease and Bayonetta. I had to try Bayonetta out. And how is it? Let me first say, I love the original Bayonetta. I brought it right here on the 360 when I picked it up. And at this time, it was a very unknown game. Not a lot of people knew what it was going to be. And I took a gamble and I started playing it. And here's a little fun fact. I was playing this game and Kim came over, this is when me and Kim first were dating, and she's like, what are you playing? And there's this woman on the screen, in this tight outfit, shooting guns, like in a 360 motion. She got high heels that are shooting guns. And I'm just like, it's Bayonetta! 
<laughs> That's the only thing I could say, and that's what I'll say. I picked up every version of Bayonetta since then. Uh, you know, two and uh, you know, on the Switch here as well. I absolutely love Bayonetta, and the reasons why I love Bayonetta in general is the over-the-top action and the over-the-top, you know, characters and the the voice acting and all of that. And yet, let's state it. Let's state it. I know there was a whole controversy with the voice actress for Bayonetta coming out saying that she had been underpaid and all of that. And I was just kind of watching it and I was, and she's telling everybody to boycott the game and I'm like, hmm, there's a lot of other people who've made this game besides you. I, I, I What she, you know, was saying that she was get, getting claimed to get paid was very low. And I was like, hmm, that's not very good. I agree with that, but she's telling everybody to boycott the game and I thought, you know what, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of people who are part of this as well. What you need to do is sort this out with the company behind the scenes and all that. And then all of a sudden it got kind of turned out that what she was saying wasn't quite the truth and all of that. And you know, for me with that, I just kind of blocked it out of my head. I'm like, this is some gobbledygook that I can't prove either way with what's really happening. I'm not a lawyer, right? So I'm like, am I gonna boycott the game? I'm like, absolutely not. And my special edition arrived the other day and I was like, Oh my god, I can't. I was, I've been looking forward to this special edition for a long time, and especially on the Switch, and especially it just symbolizes that Bayonetta 3 is here. And so I've been playing the game. How is it? It's over the top. It's Bayonetta. It's everything that you expect it to be, and then some. I like the new voice actress. I think she's really, really good. Uh, you know, I know she's been done a lot of really uh, professional work before. I love the game. It's so over the top. It's so ridiculous. It's so like the voice acting, the the humor in it, and that's what you got to talk about a lot. It's a humorous game. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and I think that's what I've always liked. And it's it's so over here as a game. It's so doing its own thing that I think that's why it's built up a fan base because it's so unique and it's so outside of the box that people are just drawn to it because it's so ridiculous. And you know what, there's even a time, I remember when we were live streaming, uh, I think it was Bayonetta 2 on the Wii U, and Kim made herself look like Bayonetta and it was kind of like surreal, I was like, my God, you do look like Bayonetta. I thought that was a, a lot of fun, but having a lot of fun with Bayonetta 3, uh, not too difficult of a game, obviously can do the difficulty settings, but this is a game that I can see myself going through in a, in a few nights and getting through. That's what I usually do with the Bayonetta games. I usually get through them in like three days, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done Bayonetta, and then I'm waiting another five years or so for the sequel, but uh, really good stuff with Bayonetta on the Switch. I think it's a phenomenal job that they've done, and uh, adoring the game. I, I really like it, even though it has some controversy. Okay, speaking of controversy. Oh, this is a big subject, and this is one that I want to get into. About a certain game. Sonic Frontiers, right here. There's a lot to be talked about with this game, isn't there? Okay, I just want to give a brief lesson about me and Sonic. I really need to say this. I think for a lot of people who have been around for a long time on the channel, you know where I'm at with Sonic. When Sonic came out on the Genesis, it was a really big deal. They finally had a mascot, and a, and a cool mascot, and one with blast processing, and we all loved uh, Sonic. I th we thought it was a great character. And then since then, there's been so many games. And I want to say this, I kind of got lost in the sea of Sonic games and, you know, people would rate this game terrible and this game great and this one bad and no, no, you don't like... And there's a lot of arguing in the Sonic community about Sonic in general, which is always a, a fun, healthy thing to do. It's, that's, that's part of video games. We all, you know, argue about what we like and what we don't like with our friends. That's the best thing ever to do. It's fun. Um, so I kind of got lost and the whole Sonic thing for a while, but I'll say this much. My favorite game, I know, my favorite Sonic game on the Dreamcast, Sonic Adventure. I, this game is a massively flawed game that I love. I think when I first saw on the Dreamcast, it blew me away with what they could do with graphics, what Sonic was doing in 3D. And I just like the whole adventure aspect of it. I liked Sonic running around with people and, and then it's like, like a resort community at times. I thought it was unique and I loved it. And then we got Sonic Adventure 2, which was a bit of a letdown, but I still kind of liked it. I've been waiting for Sonic Adventure 3 since the, the 2000s, right? I've been waiting for that. And have we ever gotten it? I don't believe so. Uh, a lot of you Sonic purists out there, 
please let me know if there's anything kind of like Sonic Adventure because as I say, I, I haven't been following what's good and bad with Sonic. I kind of got lost in it, as I say. So anyways, I started to see some trailers for Sonic Frontiers and I was like, this looks really interesting. This is it's fascinating. And a lot of people were uh, you know, chiming in, saying in some things I was reading, they're like, oh, it just looks like an empty world and it doesn't look very good. And so they started becoming uh, a break in, in the in the community about this game. No, if some people are like, this is gonna be great. Some people are like, this is gonna be terrible. And so I really didn't know what to think. So I ordered the game off Amazon and it arrived the other day. And I gotta say, I was so excited to play this game. Oh my God, I was so excited. I'm like, is this Sonic Adventure 3? Will this be that experience for me? And it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I put it in. The PS5 version, I gotta state this. Gotta show this, of course. I gotta state it a thousand times. I put it in and it has an opening cinema and I'm like, oh my God. This is like the Dreamcast era. This feels really, really good. And so I was really getting sucked into it. I'm like, and then Sonic shows up and his buddies and I'm like, oh yeah, this gives me that old school feeling. I'm really liking this. And then Sonic goes down to the land of the world and then he kind of does that kind of trial level to begin with. And I'm like, this is Sonic Adventure. It's all green and beautiful. And it, it really is sucking me in. I'm thinking this is great. And then I get past that and then you kind of get past a little bit of the tutorial. And I start to play the game. What do I think? I, I was like this. And then I started to play the game and it starts going down like this for me. And I gotta say, and I got no pleasure in doing it, really deflated about the game. I'm really, really deflated. I'm really, I'm really bummed because I really want to like this game. And what's against it? I mean, uh, there's a few things. I mean, I was playing it and the frame rate was so bad at times. I'm like, we're on PS5, folks. What's happening here? And it's just kind of jittering while I'm moving the camera around. I'm like, no, no, no. Maybe in the last generation, even the generation before I'd expect that. But why is this not optimized for PS5? What's happening? And I'm running around. The world itself is really lackluster. Not in what the things you can do. Some of the things you can do are kind of fun, but just the texturing and just the graphics in general, a bit of a letdown. I I was there and Sonic is there and the it's raining on him and on the ground. And I'm like, this is next generation. I know it was released for a lot of different machines. I get that, but we should be optimizing per machine. And the rain is coming down Sonic and I'm like, the, this is 2022 graphics for Sonic. No, this can't be possible. This can't. Be, I enjoyed this opening cinemas looking a bit old school. I got, I kind of thought that was part of the charm and all that. But running around, fighting enemies and stuff like that, it's there's a little bit of fun in there. I definitely see it. And if you're enjoying the game, that's awesome. I'm really happy you're enjoying the game. For me personally, it it just has been a big disappointment. It really has, and I I haven't had this experience in a long time where I spend like $80 on a game that I'm really excited for, and I start playing it, and within the first hour, I'm like, oh, it's not what I was hoping it would be. It's not what I was hoping it would be. It's, it's really a disappointing game for me, and uh, really kind of bummed out about it. I, I'm gonna play a bit more, though. I'm always a, a guy who's a bit more of a, a, a try, for sure, but right now, uh, Sonic Frontiers is a bit of a, a disappointment, and I, I was really hoping this would be a top tier Sonic game. Not that I know what top tier Sonic games are nowadays, because there's so many of them, but I was hoping to get the experience of Sonic Adventure. Just even if it was a flawed game with, a, you know, some kind of bad graphics here and there, because you know Sonic Adventure, you know, had that. But I, I like Sonic Adventure more than I like Sonic Frontiers, and there's like a 20 year difference between these guys. So there's something wrong there. There's definitely something wrong there. And as I say, there's frame rate issues with this. There's frame rate issues with this. Uh, but, you know, Sonic Adventure is still up there for me. I'm not going to go on about it anymore. What do you guys think of Sonic Frontiers? A lot of you have played it. Uh, give me some advice down below. Does it get better? You know, does it keep, if you get like three, four, five hours in, does it get better? I just played the first little bit and uh, it didn't kind of capture my imagination. And hey, it could change. It could absolutely change. And I'm willing to give it that bet for sure. So guys, also let me know what are some games you've been playing, some new games. That's what I want to come in here and talk about. I'm playing God of War, 
But like Sonic Frontiers has come out, Bayonetta has come out, uh, East 5 on PS5, I had to talk about that. Uh, so I just want to come in and do a little a video to rally all these guys together. Uh, a lot of fun for me to do today, that's for sure. So anyways guys, let me know what you're playing down below. Anyways guys, until next time.